I had just moved back to Portland. Not a good idea to hang out with my old drinking buddy, Harry, so I went to an AA meeting at a sober club in southeast Portland. I'd smoked some weed during my year in Eugene, of course, but I hadn't had a drink in five years. Hanging in a sober club wasn't that different from being in a bar sometimes, just without the booze. Sometimes a good place to hook up, you know, with either an old-timer or a newcomer. The long room looked like a cafeteria with tables in rows across the room. The speaker and chairperson were seated at a table in the middle of the long side of the room, coffee and cookies at the left end. About 45 people scattered around the room, a few groups and pairs, solitary people spread here and there. I sat well away from other people, slightly house left of center, back to rows. Just a regular meeting, though there were some slight differences between meeting in Connecticut and in Oregon, I discovered. Anyway, I'm headed over to the coffee table to scope out the crowd, and this long, lean, Oregon country boy starts talking to me. He looked good and like a man. He stood about 6'2", and wore jeans like only an Oregon country boy could wear them. Not so tight he couldn't move in them, but I could see what he had in them. <laughs> only six months sober, so he thought he was cured. So we're talking and planning on going out on the weekend, and cool, I'm thinking, cool. I'm glad I held on to one of my East Coast summer dresses just in case it got hot like this. He gave me a ride home, promises of more, hid behind the light kiss goodnight, yes. A couple of days later, while I was still unpacking, I heard a knock at the door. Who knew I was there? Through the peephole, I saw that Oregon man holding a birdcage and a 7-Eleven cup. Hey, Lulu, it's Tim, he drawled. I got a favor to ask you. Not wanting to appear too anxious and excited, I waited a beat before I opened the door. I greeted him with my best, most welcoming smile. Listen, I was painting a house today and I found this bird. Must have fell out of his nest, he drawled. I got some worms in this here cup and I'm wondering if you could take care of them for me. Before I could open my mouth and tell him I wasn't an animal person and that birds gave me that fluffy feeling, he said, I'll give you 20 bucks a day. I'd be happy to take care of your bird, Tim, as long as you like. I wasn't working yet and that $20 could come in handy. Great, so I'll stop by in the evening to look in on him, okay? Are you kidding me? Sure it's okay. I didn't say this out loud, mind you. So the first time I took the bird out, I noticed him just pecking away at the porch. Well, I guess that's what birds do. Birds like to peck. So when Tim came over after work, we'd take the baby into the schoolyard across the street from my apartment to practice being a bird. He couldn't fly yet, so he was safe pecking around and exploring the schoolyard. Then Tim decided that Bingo would be better off in the country at his place in his natural environment. When I started spending nights with Tim, he thought I might be better off in the country too, and I should move in with him. Tim taught Bingo to fly by holding the bird on his index finger and then pulling out, forcing Bingo to flap his wings. Soon our baby was flying to the porch railing and then to the clothesline and then to the shed, but he always came back to mama and papa. One day, Bingo flew high into the tree, and we were so proud of him. He never came back that day or the next. We watched and waited for two days. We realized our job was done. As we sat on the porch swing that evening, gazing at the stars, Tim said, that's what birds do. Thank you.